Good morning to you Till you meet another mule skinner Down on your new mud run Howdy, everybody. I'm Tap Franklin. Welcome to Drunk Drawing. First word is drunk. So, what I like to do is feature a cocktail or a drink of sorts every week. This is the Bottoms Up from Tip Top, one of my favorite restaurants currently closed because, you know, pandemic. Um, but it's their signature drink. It comes in a giant ass glass. I like to make it a little shorter. It's just Old Crow whiskey, um, a cherry. And then they use RC Cola, but I couldn't find any RC Cola, so I use Coca-Cola. Don't tell them. Tip top if you're watching. I'm sorry. I want a bottoms up from you as soon as you're open again. Please, God, please open again. Please. I'm begging you. Anyway. Today, I had a request, and I think it'll be really fun to work on it. Today, we're going to be drawing a... <laughs> That's right, we're drawing a dinosaur, a velociraptor to be more specific. Um, what I wanna do is two versions. I'm thinking we're gonna do one that's a little more realistic, true to the uh, Jurassic Park, um, their version of a raptor, even though real raptors had feathers. Raptor factor. Um, and then we're gonna do one that's a little more like graphic, you know, I've considered myself more of an illustrator, so it's gonna be something on the more illustrative side of things. So, Let's dive in. All right, so the way I'm going to approach every drawing that we work on together is gonna to be first composition. We're gonna figure out where on the paper we want it to live. Second, we're gonna find our big shapes. Then we're gonna find smaller shapes, shadow shapes. Then we're gonna refine it all with black. Then I'm gonna snap a heavy outline, fade out. That's kind of the way that I like to render anything. And then if I'm going for a different style, I'll vary from there and I'll sure I'll go into that in later episodes. So, you have your reference. I believe this is Blue from uh, Jurassic World, one of the later installments. But it's a great photo. I like the, the pose, kind of dynamic. It's not just your regular profile shot. So, let's find where we want her to live. What I want to do is make sure that I'm centering kind of a big ass shape. And now I'm going to work within this shape. That way it doesn't end up all in one corner of the entire page. I want the head to be up here, which it's kind of a cone shape. I'm really just going to focus on the bust. So just kind of like the upper third of her altogether, the head, the neck, torso. So there's kind of the rough head shape. Today I'm using a pink Sharpie and then two black Sharpies, just like I would if I was using pencils. There's kind of another big cone here for the neck, and then like a big lumpy potato shape. So I'll start with this pink and just lightly sketch all this in. So we have like sort of three ovular kind of shapes going on here. We'll refine more with the pink, then we'll move on to the black. At home, you could be using lighter pencils, um, then using a softer, darker pencil for refining. You could be using chalk, charcoal. You could be using colored pencils doing the same thing, starting with a lighter tone like an orange, and then going back over it with a black pencil. So, kind of two more cones for the arms, and then a big sort of diamond shape for the claw here. Coming off the other side, a cone, skinnier diamond. And now we're already pretty much seeing where everything's gonna live in the space here. All right, with the head, it looks like the mouth is like a third of the way down and it's a big soft W shape. So I'm just gonna make a quick little line here. 
Speaking of quick, uh, Velociraptor in Latin means swift thief. Raptor factor. Pretty cool. Probably gonna drink to that. Damn, that's good. Tip top. And then it looks like two thirds of the way back and on the top third here is where our eye is gonna live. So I'm just gonna make a little circle here. Just for now, just kind of making placeholders. The top of the head is a triangular shape. Flat across here, this is what's actually gonna give us the more realistic look. It's almost completely flat across the head here. Triangle here. Looks like there's another triangle. Uh, what is this? More of a rectangle. Any big shapes. I'm just kind of finding big shapes. It looks like the lower jaws into two shapes. So sort of two diamondy kind of shapes. I see a shape that the shadow's creating underneath the neck here. See that? Now another one. Nice. Jaw continues up. At the bottom here, so I'm gonna start using some of the scale of what I've addressed. So this comes here, this number actually goes out further, chest out further, neck back up here. One of the cool things about this reference is all of the contour lines. And in one second, I'm gonna dive into those because that's what's gonna give us the look. I'm gonna make some lines here for where the claws are going out from. Talons. You know, it's funny that a Velociraptor is actually, they think about the size of a turkey so this is almost to scale. Slope of the back down. Now I'm just going to let these lines fall away. Cool. We have our basic design, our basic shapes, our basic ideas. Well, let's go ahead and break out some black. All right, so I'm going to take a black fine tip. I'm going to start digging back in um, and just start refining some things. So I want to find the line of the top lip here, just smooth it out. It looks like there's a slight protrusion. You're just cleaning and refining. So any shape I didn't quite like before, Anything I wanted a little slimmer, a little fatter, this is the time. I'm going to go ahead and find the eyebrow outer here, where I want the nostril to live. A brow line over here. So this big shape is not the entire eye. There's an upper eyelid. That kind of sits over top of the lower lid. has a slit pupil. 
If you wanted to go ahead and put any highlights in, I would go ahead and make a note of it now. Lower jaw. Now, with the teeth, what I want to do is not draw every single individual tooth. I'm just gonna kind of like give essence of teeth. Let the viewer's eye make up the difference. Notice I changed my hand position. This makes it easier for me to get that counterbalance. This shape, flip it, shape back. Same thing with all the scales, like with the teeth. I'm not gonna draw every single individual scale on this. What I'll do when I'm doing the detail would be to uh, kind of just emphasize some of them, continue the shape back, emphasize some of them, bring this over. Now here's the initial one, but I know that I want the neck to be a little fatter. That's why you do this underdrawing, so you can push it around. You're not locked into any one thing. You know, it's like you have a, it's like you have a polyamorous relationship with your underdrawing, you know? You're able to say, I liked you, but you need to move over here. I'm interested in something else. So, like I was talking about the contour lines earlier, the contour lines are so cool. So, this reference has a lot of really cool contour lines. You can see them come across the neck, they come out, they move down, there's a wrinkle. They move down again, back into space, then loop back around. Now, I'm sculpting, I'm sculpting with the line work. I'm sculpting, you're modeling it with your hands. <laughs> So I'm coming in. I'm just going to keep emphasizing this. You know, I know I have a center line here. That's kind of like the trach or whatever of it. So I'm not real good with dino anatomy. Coming back up. Look at that. Creating so much shape. They have them all through the head here too. When they go back in space, they come to a closer point on the outside here, they're further away. This lets us know that it's curving around. Anywhere you see any shapes like that, any lines like that, any shadowing, like, just go ahead and dig in. Like I said, I won't do all of these scales, but I'll do a few just to kind of like let the viewer know, oh, he's scaly, it's a reptile. Same thing with these arms now. See, this goes up. And what we're looking at here, in, since we're working in a three-dimensional space, these lines here go up. Then it kind of straightens out. Then it would start to go down. These contour lines tell us that this is sort of our horizon line and that anything above it curves out. Anything below it curves under. It's like if you were looking at a topographical map. Contour, 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 contour. Same thing on the knuckles. Just like drawing the hand last week, we, uh, I kind of roughly put in two joints. Now I'm gonna clean it up, add in the third. One, two, three, three. 
Get this other shoulder. Same thing on this hand. Two, three. One, two, three. Oh, so. I'm gonna find just this kind of like stripe in her. Doesn't really matter, but I'm just kind of trying to make sure that it mimics the reference enough to where people viewing it would be like, oh, oh yeah, I know what that is. For me, it's never about 100% accuracy. It's about the feeling, the energy, making sure that it does represent it. Now, if I was to be doing an actual portrait, then I would actually um, trace directly over the portrait. I would either, um, if I was doing a painting, <clears throat> I would take a transparency, project that on, get all my proportions exactly correct, or if you're tattooing, you would trace over the face, make an outline, transfer that to the skin, then that becomes your skeleton for doing the actual portrait. I'm going to find some shading while I have, still have the fine marker out. Um, emphasize the eyes. So where I left the little space for the highlights before, I'm going to shade right up against it. By shading the top and the bottom of the eye, it lets me know that that goes back into space and that lids are over top of it. Find a couple more scales, contour lines, just any last little thing I want. Now I think that it's looking like a raptor. So let's break out the big guns. So I'm gonna take my king size. And now what I wanna do is bold some of the line work push that shadow away from it and see what that really does. Just cleaning up the lines. Immediately starts to push her out from the background. I'm gonna go ahead and just put some shading into the mouth here. Same thing right here. Let's find the line work. Oh yeah. What an amazing amount of difference just the tiniest bit of shading around our target makes. So that, my friends, is how I would render a Velociraptor. Let's do the same reference, but now let's have a little fun with it. Kind of make it more illustrative, exaggerate some things even more. So we just talked about doing a realistic Raptor or, you know, this can be applied to anything. If I were to be doing a more illustrative version for the kiddos um, or just for a comic book or something, you know, more animated cartoony, what I would do is I would exaggerate 
eyes and the head and the hands, make all those a little bit larger, um, and then just soften and smooth. Less of the contour lines, more just like clean rounded edges. So let's take that same reference and see how we would do that. Composition first, where do I want it to live? Now I'm gonna make the head about the same size, right? Because I'm gonna make other elements smaller. I'm gonna make the neck much smaller. Like how could that even support his head? Body smaller as well. Maybe I'll get a little more of the body this time. The arms tiny, but I'm gonna make that hand about the same size it was before. I'm still gonna flatten off the top of the head, but this time I'm gonna move the mouth a little higher up, and I'm gonna curl up the back end a little bit, like he's our friend. Oh, hey. Hey, Velociraptor, you're not gonna eat my face off, are ya? No, no. With the eye, I'm really gonna enlarge it this time. So now when I come in with the black, one of the most notable changes I'm gonna make is less lid on the eye altogether. But then also, the eye before was that cat-like slit. This time, I'm gonna make a couple of highlights and I'm gonna turn it more into just a normal pupil. This is gonna humanize it and immediately make it more recognizable and sort of just like relatable to the kiddos. Or if you were making it some sort of, you know, like Felix the cat, dark, weird kind of thing, it would still have the same effect. I'm gonna do even less definition in the teeth this time. No idea why I'm holding my hand like this. Just trying to keep it out of the way. Neck here. Yeah, just a little bit of shading in the mouth to separate it out. A little semblance of some scales. Arms, simple shapes. Keep it very simple. And with the claws this time, I'm gonna go back down to just two segments. Really big and exaggerated. What a cutie. Do a couple of contour lines if you want, but just make them super simple. So that's how I would make him a little more playful. Well, I hope that you guys had so much fun today. If you guys want to email me with any questions, anything you have about, um, you know, ideas of things to draw, things you want to see, tutorials, um, or if you just want to talk about, you know, the bleak loneliness of isolation and social distancing and what it's like to live in a pandemic. 
See you next week. Ha, 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 ha.